the top 10 best careers in 2020, at least according to Glassdoor. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. And if you like this subject, don't forget to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about college degrees, personal finance, careers, opportunities, and other things that are gonna lead you to success. And we also go over things that you want to avoid, the common traps of modern society. If that sounds like something that interests you, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell if you haven't done it already, so that you never miss any content like this. Now, with that being said, let's jump right into it. So this was an article that was posted, and Glassdoor basically did an internal study with all the data that they have gathered from people from different surveys, etc and they figured out what the 10 best jobs are. Now, in my opinion, Glassdoor is one of the better companies because I've done a ton of research on this when it comes to releasing different opinions about different careers and different degrees. So in this video, I'll be going over some of the statistics that they released and my thoughts on these different careers. Number 10 on the list was business development manager. So basically what this job is, is it's another one of those careers that's kind of like an entrepreneur with structure. There's a few careers I've talked about on this channel that are kind of like being an entrepreneur entrepreneur with training wheels, like basically you get the company, they tell you what to do, and then they kind of just let you do your own thing. And this is one of those careers that could be in that same conversation. So basically they are responsible for developing the growth within a business or even between different organizations or businesses. Now finding these growth opportunities is not the easiest thing in the world. As you can imagine, you have to have a lot of skills and you have to be kind of like your own entrepreneur. So I think a really great example of businesses that work together, they were synergistic, they both and ended up winning was Amazon and Google about 10 or 15 years ago. So Google released their ads platform, which was basically where you could put different ads on various websites. And a lot of people were not taking advantage of it and it was extremely underpriced. The only reason it was underpriced was just because of the fact that nobody knew how to use it. So what Amazon did is they went all in on Google ads. They trained a ton of people how to basically be experts on Google ads. And because of that, they were able to put their ads on all kinds of different websites, get those people from those websites on onto Amazon and they stole so many customers from so many different websites and it was instrumental in their growth. And it was honestly kind of a messed up tactic that they did. I'm not gonna go too deeply into it, but basically they would take a website that, you know, let's say they sell baby products, for instance, they would get all of the same baby products that that website sells. And if somebody was looking at, let's say a binky or something like that, they would have that same binky on Amazon for way cheaper. So a lot of the time they were actually losing money to do this because you know, the cost of the binky itself was probably more than what they were selling it for, but they were acquiring a customer that was going to spend money many, many years into the future. So it was a genius strategy that they used. They lost a lot of money for a long time, but they were able to acquire millions and tens of millions of customers doing this. So it's possible that they had a genius business development manager that came up with this idea. I don't know for sure, but that would be something that a business development manager would do. Now, the job satisfaction rating that Glassdoor had was about 4.0. The number of jobs opening on Glassdoor was around 6,500 and the median base salary according to Glassdoor was around 78,000. So the question here is why do so many businesses want to hire someone with these skills? Why? 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 Well, business development managers are going to be people who are looking for either new verticals within their own business or they're going to be looking to improve products that already exist. And there's so many different ways that you can do this. You can partner with a third party company, for instance. You could integrate their technology into your workflow and then you pay them a certain percentage every single time you get a sale. Another way would be to figure out a related product to a already existing product that's extremely popular, a product that if people bought the first one, they'd be much more likely to buy that second one. And so you could basically use it as an upsell. Now, going back to Amazon, of course, an example of this would be, let's say you purchased their video streaming service you really liked it, and then you decided, hey, maybe I'll purchase a music streaming service as well. Now, a position that is somewhat similar to this in that it's another one of those careers where you're kind of like an entrepreneur within a business, so you have a tremendous amount of freedom within the confines of the business, is going to be number nine on the list, which is strategy manager. Now, these are gonna be professionals that are going to assess the organization's overall goals and exactly when they're going to be achieved, what they have to do in order to achieve them. 
Now the overall job satisfaction for this one is 4.3, which is really, really good. There's 3,500 job openings on Glassdoor and the median base salary is 133,000. Now, unlike the last one, this one is actually not a lower level position or even a medium level position. A lot of the time, strategy managers are going to be executives. So they're gonna be at the very top of a business hierarchy. And if you're not an executive yourself, then you're going to be reporting directly to one. Now, some of the skills you're gonna to have to be really good at are going to be data analysis and setting objectives and goals for a company. Now, data analysis is all about understanding an industry and a company that you're working for and figuring out exactly what the data is telling you in terms of what you need to do in order to be a little bit more profitable. Business objectives is all about product development, what changes should be made to the internal operations of a business as well as strategy. And then developing goals is figuring out how and when those objectives are going to be reached. Now, strategy managers have to have a multitude of skills. Not only do they have to have kind of the technical data analysis side of things, but they also have to have that leadership business management side of things as well. That is a killer combination, the mathematical and statistical knowledge as well as the business expertise. Number eight on the list is going to be speech language pathologist. Now this is a healthcare degree, of course. You're gonna be helping people who most of the time have speech related disorders. Sometimes they also might have swallowing disorders as well. Most of the time you'll be working with children but sometimes you will also work with adults. Now the job satisfaction rating here is gonna be about 3.8. The number of job openings on Glassdoor is around 29,000 and the median base salary is gonna be $71,000 a year. So a uh, healthcare related degree, not surprised at all that this one made it on the list. I always like to use the example of the movie, The King's Speech when I'm talking about speech language pathology. <laughs> There's a great scene where the doctor is basically having the king do all these exercises with his tongue in order to try to help him get ready for a big speech. The king, of course, has awful stuttering problems and because of that, he's extremely shy and he needs to give a good speech to the people in order to boost their morale. From all the research I've done, this is a very rewarding career because you get to work with people and see them progress from a point where maybe they have a horrible speech disorder to the point where it's relatively well managed. Getting to see the fruits of your labors is especially important for certain types of people. So if that's something that you really enjoy, then this would be a great one for you. Number seven on the list is gonna be no surprise whatsoever, and that's gonna be software engineer. Now a software engineer is gonna be working on the maintenance, design, development, etc. when it comes to creating software. The job satisfaction rating here is gonna be a healthy 3.6. The number of job openings on Glassdoor is a crazy 50,000, and the median base salary is gonna be $105,000 a year. So this one, of course, gets mixed up with software developer all the time, which <coughs> might be one of the other ones on the list. So anyways, let me explain the difference. Software engineer is somebody who is almost like an architect for a house. That's the way you wanna think about a software engineer. Okay, so an architect is going to design the plans for a house, and then the software developer is the one who looks at those plans and actually builds out the house itself. So they're the ones who are gonna be doing most of the actual physical coding. Now there's a lot of skills that overlap here, of course. A lot of the time these two jobs are actually interchangeable, but generally speaking, a developer will be highly skilled at maybe one or two languages. Whereas an engineer would be highly skilled at different frameworks, they can learn any language, and it makes them very easy to decide what languages would be best for which projects. Software engineering also tends to be a little bit more creative than software development. At bigger companies, there tends to be a huge distinction between the two, whereas at smaller companies, they're kind of merged together. Number six on the list is going to be another technology-related career, big surprise there, and that's going to be a data engineer. So this is basically going to be all about designing and developing information systems. And information systems tend to be focused on data itself. So you might have a bunch of data and you want to design a system that knows how to interpret that data in such a way that it would be useful in the real world. Now the job satisfaction for this one is going to be 3.9 out of five, which is excellent. There's 6,900 job openings posted on Glassdoor and the median base salary is $102,000 a year. So this is another one where it sounds very similar to another one that I mentioned, which is data scientist. So data engineers are gonna focus more on the design process 
as well as the streamlining and automation of different information systems. Whereas data scientists focus a little bit more on experiments and kind of approach data from more of a scientific and analytical perspective. Data science is a little bit more experimental, whereas data engineering is focused more on performance and it tends to be a little bit more practical as well. Data engineers are basically specialists within the field of software engineering and they specialize in building information systems that store, consolidate, and retrieve data. Now this isn't just any random data, it tends to be the type of information that if interpreted correctly will lead to the company making a lot more money. This data will be shown to executives, analysts, data scientists, etc., so that they can make decisions on the future of the company. Number five on the list is going to be DevOps engineer. Hey, what do you know? Another technology related career. This is why I tell you guys, uh, coding and programming, that's where it's at. So DevOps engineer in really simple language, it's almost like a software developer mixed with an IT person. So an information technology specialist. So the job satisfaction here is going to be 3.9 out of 5, which is excellent. There's about 6,600 jobs that are open right now on Glassdoor. And the median base salary is $107,000 a year. So they basically have the coding skills of a software developer, as well as the practical skills of an IT person. Oh, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? In fact, DevOps stands for development and operations, and it emphasizes the communication between IT professionals and coders. Now, this is designed to create a smoother overall workflow when it comes to the process of creating and integrating software. And this is where DevOps is incredibly valuable because they save the company a ton of time. A lot of the time, software will be released, there's a ton of bugs, there's a lot of issues, and because of that, a lot of companies will basically delay the release of software because they're kind of perfectionists and they want to make sure there's no issues. The company doesn't want to bring anything to market if it has a ton of bugs in it because that'll probably scare customers away. So what the DevOps engineers basically do is they are able to bring things to market much faster because they kind of act like people who would have the skills on the coding side as well as the other side, which is the technology side, the actual side where you're looking looking and making sure that there's no bugs. And the faster you can test a product out and get it to the point where it's ready to be brought to market, the more money the company is going to make. Now this is a relatively new position as well, and in my opinion, it's one of the hottest careers out there. You can easily see how hiring a DevOps manager, especially at some of these big companies, can save the company millions and millions of dollars if you can even just get a product out a week earlier or a month earlier. This is a really good one. I see it being even better in the future. Number four on the list is going to be product manager. Now this is another one of those careers that's kind of similar to the two that I talked about before, where it's almost like you're an entrepreneur, but you're within the company itself, if that makes any sense. So you do actually have quite a bit of freedom with some of these careers, but you're within the confines of a company and it's almost like having training wheels for being an entrepreneur. So a product manager specifically is gonna be responsible for developing and releasing products within an organization. So let's take Amazon on again, for instance, let's say the business development manager came up with an idea that they are going to break into the pharmacy market. The strategy manager realized this is a very good goal and they set a goal to purchase a company so that they could get a part of the market share within the pharmaceutical industry and specifically when it comes to pharmacies. Then they purchased a company like PillPack, for instance, which they did for over $700 million and the product manager gets put in charge of some of their products. Now, it might not be all of the products within PillPack, it might just be one or two of the products, but they would be responsible for that product from the inception, from the vision, all the way to seeing it through, and sometimes even further than that. Now the job satisfaction here is 3.8 out of 5, which is great. There's 12,000 jobs open on Glassdoor, and the median base salary is 117,000. The product manager would be responsible for knowing exactly what market you're targeting, who is your customer? What are you selling to them? What is the problem that you're solving for them? Then they would come up with how the product is going to be marketed as well as the launch strategy. They're responsible for assembling different teams. So they would probably have like a marketing team and an engineering team and making sure that they are communicating with each other. Now, these careers that are kind of like mini entrepreneur, it's kind of like entrepreneur with training wheels. Not only do they pay really well, they've got great job satisfaction. But on top of that, I think these are great segues 
segues into starting your own business and becoming an entrepreneur yourself. You're basically learning like 80, 90% of the skills that you need to go out and start your own product or your own business that would be extremely successful. Now, this is one of the most common careers that people go into after getting their MBA or Master's of Business Administration. And you do want to have some technical skills here. I think it's always a good idea to have some knowledge when it comes to technology. However, the most important thing here is going to be the soft skills. The business side of things like sales, leadership, communication, management, these are gonna be the most important skills. Number three on the list is gonna be one that we already talked about, which is data scientists. This one's different from data engineer. So basically they're gonna be organizing a bunch of complex data and they're going to be putting it in such a way and organizing it in such a way that they can make really important decisions for the business based on that data. A lot of the time it's just gonna be a giant block of data that makes no sense whatsoever and you have to organize it and try to make some sense of it so that you can make really good business decisions. Now the job satisfaction rating here is gonna be four out of five, which is excellent. There's 65 500 job openings on Glassdoor and the median base pay is going to be $107,000 a year. So this is one where you truly have to be extremely skilled at several different things and for that reason a lot of the time people who work as data scientists actually end up getting master's degrees. Not only do you have to have extreme skill in software development but you also have to be extremely skilled at mathematics and statistics and on top of that you also have to be pretty business savvy because of the fact that data scientists are going to be making decisions based on the data that will really affect the business and the data you're going to be getting in is usually going to have something to do with either sales or marketing number two on the list is going to be Java developer what do you know another technology related career I feel like I'm kind of beating a dead horse on this channel at this point by telling you guys you know computer science coding all this sort of thing software development these are all incredibly valuable skills but the proof is in the pudding just look at all these careers like over half of them are technology related. Now Java is very commonly used by large organizations. A lot of the time you're going to find it in their websites or their applications. The job satisfaction rating here is 3.9 out of 5 which is great. There's a ton of job openings on Glassdoor at over 16,000 and the median base pay is going to be $83,000 a year. So Java developers are a specialized type of computer programmer or software developer and a lot of the time they're going to be working with people who set up the websites. They'll be working with web developers and software engineers in order to integrate the Java code into different websites or applications. So this is the type of code that's extremely common and a lot of people choose to specialize in it. So I've talked about this before, but when it comes to a software development career, there's basically two different directions you can go. You can either specialize in something like a language or a framework. For instance, I ran into a software developer who was basically specialized in database architecture. He was basically a database architecture genius and he was paid extremely handsomely for his specialized knowledge. A lot a lot of the time what happens, and this is the unfortunate part, is as you get older as a programmer, companies tend to phase you out. And so you're going to want to either specialize or you can do the second thing, which is move into more of a management related role. Now in this particular case, it would be specializing in Java. It's a really good one for you to specialize in, extremely useful. So I'm not surprised at all that this one was mentioned and I'm not even surprised that it came in as number two. Number one on the list, the best job according to Glassdoor is going to be a front end engineer. Now, what is the difference between a front-end engineer and every other type of engineer and developer and data scientist and blah, 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 blah. They all sound the same, right? Well, front-end engineers are going to specifically work on what the customer or the patient or the end user sees. So for instance, you're scrolling YouTube and the front-end engineer probably worked with a web developer to create exactly what you see on your screen. Back-end engineers, on the other hand, maybe they are focusing on developing data or developing the framework or storing that data or something like that, but it's stuff that you don't actually see on YouTube. It's all happening under the surface. So the job satisfaction rating here is going to be 3.9 out of 5, which is great. There's 13,000 job openings on Glassdoor and the median base pay is going to be $105,000 a year. So this one can be really attractive to some people because it combines your technical 
technical kind of, you know, software development skills with a little bit of an artistic side because you are going to be working on stuff that people actually see. Also, from what I've read, there's a little bit less of an emphasis on mathematics and coding as a front end developer versus being a back end engineer or a back end developer. So I thought this was an interesting list. Um, some of the methodology that they use on here, I'm not 100% sure how accurate it is. You know, it's so subjective at the end of the day. For some people, the pay is really going to matter a lot. For some people, the pay is only going to matter up to a certain point and then past that, it doesn't really matter to them at all. For some people, they like a really high stress competitive environment. Others like to be more chill and laid back. But overall, what's really telling here is just the sheer amount of companies that are posting jobs on this website. You know, when you've got 15, 16,000 companies that are posting jobs for this particular skill set, that tells you that that is a skill set that's in extremely high demand. And when you have a skill that's in demand, you're going to tend to get paid higher. So if you're someone who wants to get paid really well, that's going to be an option for you. You're also going to have a lot of options. Companies are basically going to be fighting over you. So there might be a certain position that you really don't like. Like maybe you are just alone all the time and you're not interacting with anyone. Well, you can find another job where you're going to be interacting with people all the time. So it really doesn't matter what personality you have, you're going to find something that's good for you just because of the fact that there's so much demand for the skills that you have. Now, on top of this, people who have skills that are high in demand are going to tend to have higher job satisfaction as well. And again, the reason for this is just simple supply and demand. If you have a ton of different options, different companies that are willing to, you know, fight over you, give you really good sign on bonuses, that means that the company that you're currently working for is going to have to treat you better in order to keep you. This is why you see all those ridiculous videos of these tech companies where they'll have like free restaurants inside of Google and they'll have like an hour in the middle of the day where you can just go meditate or like practice jujitsu and there's like free classes and there's free speeches from the smartest people in the world and they just have all these ridiculously cool opportunities and the reason for that is because they want to keep their workers happy so that they stay there. All right if you haven't done already make sure to smash the like button hit the subscribe button ring the notification bell comment down below any thoughts comments criticisms etc and before you go make sure to check out my other videos right here I made them just for you.